all right um good day this video will just be uh, a kind of um, a warm-up into what we should expect in our defense just 14 things which i expect everyone getting into the defense hall to know about his or her project 14 things and i believe uh, the journey of project writing has actually been um, very much cool and even if it hasn't been um i know you'll be ending well all right, down to the 14 uh, tips or, like I say, 14 things which you should know before entering your defense hall. First thing first is your topic. Know your topic in full. Please don't go in there and say your topic in a way or in a manner that suggests that you are just um, getting to hear of such topic for the first time. This is a topic which you've actually been on for over six months, seven months, eight months, and in some cases, some a year. You've been on this topic and we expect that by now you should have known this topic in full. You should just know this topic the way you know your name. You say it with confidence. You say it with authority. You say it convincingly. You don't just say it like someone who is reciting something that was just uh, memorized a few minutes ago. You say your topic with what confidence and say it in full. What do I mean by saying a topic in full? Let me give us an instance. Now, I'll be using an instance of a topic, and I'll show you what makes it a full topic. Uh, the topic I'll be using, for instance, is the effects of unethical accounting practices in financial reporting in Enugu State, a study of 7 or bottling company PLC, Enugu. You know, you can actually say the, uh, the topic is the effect of unethical accounting practices in financial reporting in Enugu State, and you decide to stop there. But to say it in full, I, you need to tell us the case study which you've adopted in that your what in that your very work. So that being said about that, the first point is know your topic in full. And when saying this your topic, say it with what utmost confidence, authority, and in fact, you say it in a way it's so convincing. Say it in a way that it trans it transmits or it transfers meaning to whoever hearing it. Say it to intimidate us, your examiners, in the hall. At least the topic is something which you should know so well. So you should know your topic in full and say it with confidence. The number two is you should know your dependent and your independent variable. Know your dependent and your independent variable. Now, you are not going anywhere to look for the dependent and the independent variable. These two variables are in your topic. They are in your topic. Now, for instance, let me go back to the topic which I said I... I just we just use for instance now. Uh, we have the effect of unethical accounting practices. You see, is a kind of a full stop there, or a, let's say a pause there. The effect of an unethical accounting practices in so unethical accounting practices is on its own. First, we are not checking the effect of these unethical accounting practices in financial reporting. So the two variables here is unethical accounting practices and what financial reporting. And you agree with me, when the accounting practices is not good, let me not use that word on ethical, when it's not good, it affects the way the financial uh, statement or financial report of organization is being reported. You get, let me take it again. When the accounting practices of an organization is not good, the financial reporting or financial statement or financial report of that very organization is affected. Meaning, that financial report depends on what on the accounting practices that's on ethical accounting practices to either be good or bad so if financial reporting depends on it that means it is the word financial reporting that is a dependent variable while on ethical accounting practices is independent variable now let me just give us a trick i repeat let me just give us a trick the trick here is when you detect the two variables in your topic the first one is always the independent variable while the second one is always the dependent variable. The first one is always the independent variable, while the first one is always the dependent variable. Let me use another topic for an instance. I didn't write it out, but I'll just say it out of my mouth. Um, the topic is the impact of government expenditure on poverty reduction. The two things we're looking at here is government expenditure and poverty reduction. Now, you agree with me that government spent in an economy to reduce poverty. That means for poverty to be reduced, government has to spend. So the poverty reduction is depending on what government expenditure. 
And like I said, the second one is always what the dependent variable. From the topic which I just said, the impact of government expenditure. Government expenditure is the first variable that comes. That means it's independent, while poverty reduction is what the dependent. I believe this is clear. Um, that is that about how to get out your dependent and independent variable. Um, before I go ahead, if you have any question, if you have any question or any difficulty or any area which you're not clear of, just drop your comment in the comment sessions or drop your questions in the comment sessions. I would reply you as soon as possible. Now, the third thing you should know before entering your defense hall is know the justification or have a reason for what writing on your on that topic. Now, you could you could be asked why did you decide to research on this topic? That is what the third point is saying. Why did you decide to research on this topic? Why didn't you write on some other topic? Why didn't you write on any other thing? Why didn't you write on auditing? Why didn't you write on taxation? Why didn't you write on something else? Why? was it this very topic now right from the topic you can easily derive the reason why you decide to write on that topic right from the topic now if you look at your topic normally or traditionally project research came out as a as a result of students the final year students were expected to look at a a, 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 a present problem either in the economy or in a particular organization or in an industry and kind of carry out a research on that problem and provide solution to that problem. That's what's brought about project research. So if you're not being asked, why did you decide to research on this topic? It is just your ability to point out uh, a problem around your topic and say, looking at this problem, looking at this problem, that was what led me writing on this topic. For instance, let me look at this topic, the effect of an unethical accounting practices in financial reporting. Now, when you ask me why did I decide to research on this topic, why didn't I write on another topic, what's my justification, what's my reason for writing on this topic, I'll just give you two straight answers. One, I can decide to tell you, I decided to write on this topic so that I'll find out the effects of unethical accounting practices in financial reporting. I'll take it again. One, I can give you two, two answers to the fact or to the reason why I decided to write on this topic or the justification for this topic. Or um, what came about this topic? Why no other topic? One is that I decided to write on this topic because I wanted to find out the effects or to determine or to evaluate or whichever language you want to use. But you wanted to find out the effects of what ethical accounting practices in financial reporting in any state. Now, secondly, you can as well still say that um, looking at the present um, economy or looking at the present situation in the country, there have been cases of what unethical accounting practices whereby people are always found wanting in the accounting profession whereby you're meant to uh, record a transaction you see people inflating figures that was what actually what motivated me into writing on this topic so you see this is what you should give as your answer when you're being asked our that or when you're being asked why you decide to what to research on the topic now the fourth one is uh know the significance or the importance of your study now, when it comes to the significance or the importance of your study, you should find that in your chapter 1. That should be in 1.6 or 1.7. Now, what you should just do in your significance or importance of the study is know those that will benefit from your work. For instance, is it the organization? Is it the management of a company? Is it the, the, the general public? Know what they will benefit from, what, from your work. Know the importance of that your work to those people. Now, most of the problem which students always have when it comes to project defenses, you want to actually say these things the way they are in your work, word for word. No. In that situation, you end up running uh, into a state of confusion because at the end of the day, you, you might actually skip a word and immediately whatever you're saying loses meaning and at that very point, you are lost. So most of the times, what I tell my students is ensure you read this stuff Understand what it's actually saying. On your defense ground, say it in your own ways, but just say that same thing. Let it mean the same thing, or say it in your own ways. Don't try to impress us by telling us big, big words or big, big grammar or whatever. Just say these things in a simple way whereby the, we would actually understand without having to, what, to look at uh, the work over and over again. I believe this is uh, well understood. Don't try to impress us with big English 
or big vocabularies just be simple and go straight to the point now the fifth one is know the uh, know the definition of the major terms or words in your topic now what are the major terms um those are things which you could be asked what is this and what is that the major terms in this topic for instance is um unethical accounting what is unethical okay let's say let's start with what is unethical know what is, what the word unethical means know what unethical the word unethical practice means and know what financial reporting means those are just the few things which um i expect them to maybe ask you what is financial reporting know what unethical uh unethical means know what unethical accounting practice mean and know what uh, financial reporting means that's what i expect them to ask you um the sixth one is know the theories you use in your research now theories are are, are are things which or like just like they say theory they have been propounded there are things which have been said uh for years some might be 1980 something some might be 1970 something some 1940 something but these are theories which are still applic applicable to this present day just like most of you hear the law uh the theory of uh, uh, gravity where or whereby they say whatever goes up must surely come down so such theories every work must have a theory every work must have a theory you'll find that in your chapter two that's uh, that should be 2.2 on the uh, theoretical review now in this theoretical review i know you'll be asking me does it mean i have to know uh everything about these theories no i'm trying to make the work easy for you know these theories in the sense that if it is uh famous amos theory if it is bonic computers theory if it is um whatever theory know the theories which you actually mentioned if it is four of them just know them by name then pick one that you can easily explain if possible pick one you can easily explain because if i'm to ask you or if i will be on your hold that day i will ask you what are the theories you adopted for your work and when you tell me the theory i might ask you which one did you what base your work on just pick anyone you can easily explain and tell me this is the one i base my work on because it tells us this and it tells us that and the theory was propounded by this person that's all i'll take it again just know the title know the title of the theories if it is two theories if it is four theories you use in your work mention those theories if i ask you what are the theories you use in your work and if after mentioning them and i decide to ask you which one did you adopt your work on just pick one that you can comfortably and conveniently explain tell me who propounded the theory tell me the year it was propounded and tell me what this theory is all about and how it's related to your work in just five Five sentences are too much. In just two to three sentences, you're done with that. So that is that about theories. Then the next thing for you to know is your research design. Know your research design. Now, basically, there are two um, there are two types of research design, or not not two types. Sorry, I'll take it again. Basically, there are majorly two types. Majorly two types. Not as if there are just two types, because we have um, the content analysis, we have the uh, the, the metric uh, analysis, and several others. But basically, in uh, social sciences, that is in accounting, banking, um, uh, mass com, most of these uh, departments, what we use are just two sets. Majorly, is either we're using the expo factor research design or we're using the uh, descriptive survey research design. Now, Expo Factor, if you're uh, Expo Factor would be your research design if you're using a company's financial statement, their annual report to gather data. Yes, a comp I will take it again. Expo Factor research design would be your research design if you are using secondary data. Like I said here, the Expo Factor research design will be used in the research work to analyze secondary data that means it is only when your work is on secondary data when you are when you are not using questionnaire for your work that you can see your expo factor uh, that expo factor research design is what is your research design you adopted in your work but once you check at the back of your work and there is a questionnaire there that means your research design is what descriptive survey research design please don't make that mistake once your work is is primary data and you use questionnaire your research design is what descriptive survey but once you check and your work is not primary data and is secondary data and you do not use questionnaire your work is purely what expo factor expo factor research design i believe this is clear so the next point is point number eight where they will ask they could ask you 
the type of data you use for your work or for your research. Now, note, there are, there are, people always get confused with this. Now, if someone asks you the type of data you use for your work, now make this point clear. When writing your work, there are two sets of data that always comes up. The first set is in the sense that you need articles and journals. We call those secondary data. But when it comes to data, which most people know it as, is whereby the data which you use in your analysis. Now, in that one, we have the primary data and we have the secondary data. The primary data are data which you collected by yourself. When I mean collected by yourself, these are data which someone else did not collect and you are now using it. You are the one that did it yourself. It is raw. That is what we call the primary data. And such data, in most cases, when it has to do with social sciences, we collect them with the use of questionnaire. Interviews. Questionnaire, oral interviews, or anything. But the other, which is secondary data, are those which we collect from already published data, like the financial statements of a company. They were, they are, the, we are not the one that collected that data. The company has already provided it in their financial statement. So we call that one secondary data. So note, your work is either a primary data or a secondary data. And how you can easily know whether your work is primary or secondary? Check if your work did not use questionnaire. How would you know what a questionnaire is? Questionnaire are or is a set of questions which we use in analyzing, like you distribute those questions and people answer it. It's always at the back of your work after the reference. After chapter five, you see the reference and you see uh, the questionnaire. If you did not use a questionnaire, it is secondary data. But once that kind of thing, or that questionnaire which I just described is at the back of your work or you, you saw it when you were doing your work, obviously what you use is the primary data. Next thing I expect you to know is to know your population. Know your population. Like the topic which I use uh, for illustration now, uh, this, the, the study is a seven-up bottling company. So our population is obviously seven-up bottling company, their staff members. Their staff members, either you use their staff member, it depends on what you cover as a population, or just the financial uh, uh, department or the finance department of that uh, of seven or bottling company could be your population. Now, traditionally, what is being done is that when the population is not large, standard, the standard is when your population is not large, you use the same figure for what sample size. But whereby the population is too much, that it is believed that you can't be actually you can't actually be able to reach out to such large number of uh, people or respondents in the little uh, time frame which you have. That means you need the what a to use um to use the sample size, and sample size has a formula which is being used. When the population is known, we use the Taro Yamani formula. To get our sample size, the Taro Yamani formula. Why some people call it Taro Yamani, some call it Yaro Yamani, but they are all the same thing. The formula remains the same. Taro Yamani, Yaro Yamani is just the same thing. That's what we use in getting our sample size when the population is known. But once your population is unknown, when you don't know the number of people actually in your population, that means what you used is a Z formula. Take note of that. So um, that is that about population. So you should know your population, know your sample size. Uh, sorry, know your population, know your sample size. That is very important. And if possible, know the formula you use in deriving that word, sample size. Who propounded that formula? Like I told you, Tari Amani is what we use in determining our sample size. The next thing is number 10, know the method used for your data analysis and test of hypothesis. Now, uh, for your data analysis, the method used, if you are using a primary data, if you use a primary data, what the method of data analysis you would have used or you obviously must have used is presenting your data in tables and percentages. That's what you use. So if you use primary data, note, you use you you pre, you use the uh, table and percentages in what in carrying out your data analysis. Then to test your hypothesis, you are either using uh, the Akeik, that's the old model chi square, or you use the the new model SPSS or eViews 
for what your test of hypothesis. I'll take it again. If you are using primary data, note what you obviously use was to present or to analyze your data in tables and percentages. That's for primary data. And you uh, to test your hypothesis, what you use was either the archaic or the old modeled chi-square, or you use the present model SPSS or eViews. So check out what you used in your work and please note that in case you are being asked. Then if you use secondary data, what you use in analyzing your work is obviously the same thing. Use SPSS in analyzing and to test the hypothesis, it's just that same SPSS you use. Secondary data, you use SPSS to analyze your data and to test the hypothesis, hypothesis it is the same SPSS you used in testing the hypothesis. Now, the next thing is for you to know your findings and your recommendation. Findings are obviously in chapter 5. Findings are obviously in chapter 5. Check out what your findings are. Know those findings. And for your recommendation, even if it is one, pick one recommendation that actually makes sense and actually conveys meaning and, cut and know it off head. And know it off head. Please, pick up one that actually makes sense and know it off head. So you can actually what, relate that to us when we ask you this on your defense day. Another thing I would like you to know is what type of referencing style you adopted. Um, the answer to this, or what I require or expect to hear from you when I ask you this, is that you adopted the APA style of referencing, 6th edition. APA, APA, 6th edition. APA, 6th edition. Though the 7th edition is already out, but not uh, most, not everyone actually adopts that, but what's still in vogue is the APA, 6th edition. Now, know the instrument to use for your data collection. If your work is primary data, the instrument you use for your data collection is obviously a questionnaire. So you note that if your work is a primary data work, the instrument used for data collection is obviously a questionnaire. Then if your work is a secondary data work, the instrument for your data collection is obviously that company's financial statement or annual report where you got those figures for. The financial statement or annual report where you get where you got those figures from. Then lastly, know how to summarize your work in two to five minutes. If you're being asked to summarize your work in two to five minutes, what these people are just asking you is a kind of your abstract. Because in your abstract, you are telling us your topic, your objective, the method which you adopted, uh, the findings, and your recommendations. So if you're being asked to summarize your work in two to five minutes, note, all you just need to tell us is your abstract. Now, before ending now, I would like you to take note of this. Please and please, in your presentation, in your defense, one, dress appropriately, dress smartly. Two, remove every atom of fear. Do not be scared of anything. And three, whatever you're saying, we would only believe it if you say it with confidence, if you say it with authority, authority if you say it with so much energy. Mm -hmm. So you don't come up and start telling us that you, you, you don't... Us. 